Um, it's a great joy to be here. Thank you for having me again. And Balu, um, he's also from Nepal, from Brokum. He's also here. We have to just spend time with you, brothers. I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, I so very quickly, I will say, whatever I speak, I do not speak as an expert. I will speak as a brother who is doing the same thing that you are doing here in Nepal. <laughs> in fact, most of the things that I will speak, you already know about them. So this time would be a great time of being reminded about the truths from scripture. Uh, so, uh, we are gathered here to talk about a healthy church. What is a healthy church? <laughs> uh, nine marks of a healthy church, right? <laughs> so, lots of churches have been planted in India and Nepal over the last few decades. And you know this very well, and I know this very well, that the condition of these churches are not what the Bible describes or expects it to be. So you and I need to be sometimes reminded what actually a church is. You know there is a big movement where people say just two or three gather in my name there is a church. I understand why people say that but we need to like not say things without thinking carefully what we mean. Words mean something right? And we, when we use a word we should understand that the other person will understand what I am trying to say otherwise it's meaningless. So that's why when we talk about church we need to know what a church is. So very quickly what is a church? It's a church. Uh, I will say it's a community of baptized believers that have covenanted together uh, to worship the Lord by how? By hearing the word of God by partaking in the ordinances that the Lord has instituted there are two ordinances, baptism and communion and when, um, when a group of believers do this regularly, that's a church and if three or four people have done that, then that is a church. It doesn't have to be 300 or 30 people, 3 4, it's fine. But they must do these two, these things that we've talked about. So we need to have clarity about what we are talking about, right? But when we are talking about baptized believers, how do they even become believers? Who are these believers? What do they believe in? Uh, these believers believe in the gospel. So we want to talk about what is the gospel in the next 30-40 minutes. So what is the gospel? Uh, you talk to people, pastors have answers for this all over the world, something or the other. And I'm sure you also have an answer for what is the gospel. We all want to preach the gospel. We all claim to be people of the gospel. And we all are offended when somebody else tells us that you need to understand the gospel. You guys are actually very humble. It's a mark of humility that you are here to talk about the gospel. So I am very grateful for you indeed. 
Uh, so you know what the gospel is, right? When we talk, use the word gospel, very in basic terms means good news. In our daily language, in a day-to-day -day conversation, we don't use the word gospel in either India or in Nepal, right? Um, but when somebody uses not the word good news, the gospel, and when not the word gospel, so for a second don't think about the Bible New Testament I'm just talking about the good news the, the something which is good and sometimes people simplify the gospel so much and reduce it so much that that's how they start thinking so when the biblical use of gospel is emptied of its biblical meaning and then we just try to say oh good news gospel means good news and therefore news that is good that's it and this is what is often taught in many seminaries in India for sure <coughs> I have sat in seminars and uh, semin uh, classes where people have said, Oh, anything, any news which is good, is good news, is the gospel. So, for example, uh, 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 for a hungry man, somebody gives him the food. That is the good news, that is the gospel. Uh, for a man who is struggling in winter from cold, from cold weather, warm clothes, good news for him. A lot of people who are very sick in our subcontinent, uh, health is good news for them. Uh, there is so much poverty in our country and money, um, job, employment is good news for people. And people who are being oppressed because of caste, liberation from caste is good news for them. And that's how many people understand the gospel also. Uh, but then there's some problem here. When we look at the New Testament, the New Testament doesn't describe good news as this in the, these many <laughs> The problem with this kind of understanding is that it only focuses on the felt need of man. Do you understand what I mean by felt need? Anything that we can see. Anything that we can feel. Anything that we can touch. So these things that we can see, feel, touch, the tangible things, they become the need. So then the focus becomes on these physical needs of mankind. And when we focus on the physical needs of man, then that's what we try to address. And addressing those felt needs becomes the gospel, the good news for people. I want you to pause for a second. When you think of the good news, what do you think? Be very honest with yourself. Most of you are pastors, right? 
Uh, you want your churches to grow. You want people to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And what does my, my inner being attract me or, or compels me to tell the people in front of me? Um, often people say, well, if a person is dying, what are you going to give them? So people come up with all different kinds of um, extreme case scenarios. So on the road to the airport, Kathmandu Road, a man met with an accident and he's lying on the road. What what are you going to do with him? Or you're not you're going to take him to the hospital? No, are you not going to do that? Or are you going to preach him the gospel there? And then oh yeah, of course I Take him to the hospital. Oh, then what is the good news for him then? The good news is that you came and took him to the hospital. So some people try to twist the whole thing in this way. And there's a reason why I'm, I'm trying to press this for a while. Because until as you uh, I'll see how this, the felt need traps us, you won't be able to get to the second thing that we want to talk about, the real need. And you and, I, and you and I who are in the gospel ministry, we are constantly tempted to address people's felt need first or all or put all the energy towards that. And well, the gospel of Jesus Christ is different. First of all, it is about Jesus Christ. Uh, look at with me the gospel according to Mark. Uh, chapter 1, verse 1. And it's very, very, very clear. What does it say there? It says the beginning of the gospel, the good news. And, and it is the gospel of whom? Who is it about? It is about Jesus Christ. The gospel and the New Testament talks about it is about Jesus Christ. If there is no Jesus, it is not the gospel. And who is Jesus? He is the Son of God. And why is this important? Because the Son of God has come to earth. And in chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, what does he do? Look at in verse 14. Mark chapter 1, verse 14. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. And the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news of God. Uh, and when Jesus is preaching the good news of the gospel, the good news, what does he talk about? Verse 15. Uh, he says the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. And therefore do what? You repent and you believe in the gospel. Or believe in the gospel. So this is what we're talking about when we when we use the word the gospel. The gospel is about Jesus Christ. Who is he? He is the Son of God. And he is the King. He how do we know he's the King? You read the gospel, it becomes very apparent. Very, very clear. And Jesus says the kingdom of God is here. It, it has come. The time is fulfilled. Why has the kingdom come? The kingdom has come because the king has come. And who, who is the king? Uh, Jesus is the king. How do you enter into this kingdom? You enter into this kingdom by repenting and believing in the gospel. A lot of people like to use the word, the phrase gospel, the kingdom, the kingdom. 
We want to see the kingdom of God come. And they confuse that with the gospel. The kingdom of God in the Bible, in the New Testament particularly, and the gospel go together. You do not enter the kingdom of God without the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what do you do with the gospel of Jesus Christ? You believe in it. And you repent from your sins. Uh, one more passage, let me quickly take you to. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 15. Verse chapter 15, verse 1. Very simple, very clear. He, he said, I, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you. <laughs> So Paul wants to remind them of the gospel that he's already preached to them. So gospel was preached and they received. And because of that verse too, you are being saved. But they will be saved if they hold fast to to that word, to that truth, to that gospel. And which word? The word which was preached to them. And if it is still not clear what is that gospel, that word, verse 3 tells us more clearly. So Paul says, For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received. So what did Paul preach to the people there? What did Paul give to the people there? What did Paul talk about to the people there? Well, he had only one thing to talk about. That Christ died for our sins. That Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. Oh, and he died and then he was buried, verse 4. And then verse 4, he was raised on the third day. And this is all according to the scripture. Uh, this is the gospel. <coughs> it's about Jesus Christ. Jesus came into this earth. Who is Jesus? He is the divine man. Uh, he is God and he is man. He is truly God and he is truly man. In his Godness he is fully God. In his humanity he is fully human. And he came on this earth. And, and then he lived a perfect life. And then he died on the cross. And then not only he died, he rose again. And he was seen by people. And he, he was ascended into heaven. And he will come again. And all those who believe in him will not, will not perish, but will have eternal life. One day they will die, but they will not die. Just as Jesus rose again, they will rise up again. Just as Jesus is with the Father in heaven, we will be with him forever. This is the good news. This, this is the gospel. This is what we talk about. But why is this gospel so important? <coughs> because it addresses a real need. It doesn't address a felt need. It doesn't address, it doesn't fill our stomachs literally, physically. And maybe it doesn't take away our sickness. Maybe it doesn't provide us with jobs or security, financial security. So it doesn't address the physical need. The felt need that we can see with the eyes, but it certainly addresses the real need. The real need that the people of Nepal have. 
कुरा गर्छ द रियल नीड द पीपल अफ इन्डिया ह्याड भारतका मानिसहरुको साँचो खाँचो यस्तो कुरा बट दे डोन्ट नो दैट तर तिनीहरुले त्यो थाहा छैन दे दे नट इभन अवेयर अफ द नीड तिनीहरुले तिनीहरुको बारेमा आफ्नो खाँचोको बारेमा ज्ञान पनि छैन दिस इज व्हाट मेक्स इट इवन सो डिप्रेसिङ एन्ड डिस्करेजिङ अनि यसले चाहिँ हामीलाई यति निराश अवस्थामा पुर्याउँछ दिस इज व्हाई इट्स इवन मोर इम्पोर्टेन्ट अनि यो त्यस कारण यो सुसमाज अझ बढी महत्त्वपूर्ण छ दिस इज व्हाई वी ह्याव टु बी सो क्लियर अबाउट द गॉड यस कारण हामी तपाईँ र म चाहिँ सुसमाजको बारेमा अति प्रष्ट हुनु जरुरी छ आई वाज गोइंग अराउन्ड द सिटी यसटरडे विथ विथ बालु एन्ड माय अदर ब्रदर एन्ड द डे बिफोर यसटरडे अनि हामी जो अस्ति काठमाडौँ हामी घुमेको थियौ बालु भाइ र अरु साथीहरुसँग वी भिजिटेड अ लोट अफ प्लेसेस ऑफ वर्शिप अनि हामी आराधना गर्ने धेरै ठाउँ राम गयौ एन्ड व्हाट डिड वी सी इन दोस प्लेसेस ऑफ वर्शिप हामी के देख्यौ त्यो पूजा गर्ने ठाउँ वी सी हन्ड्रेड्स अफ पीपल and so you mind sir with thousands of people hazaro mind sir with people who are very 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 sincere ekdam imandar manis haru a people who have genuine desire in their heart ani aphno hriday ma sacho chahana bhuke garu people who are seeking some kind of forgiveness from some deity unni devi devta bada kuni kisim ko chhemadan ko apeksha gareka manis haru and then they have priests who are helping them leading them ani tya pujari haru thie jasle tini hara sahayata garde the oboy garde what do you think is their real need tinar ko sacho khacho kyo bhane tapai sochnu huncha what do you think those people really need ti manis haru lai sacho ke chahiyeko cha tapai sochnu do they need english medium schools in nepal ye tinar ko nepal ma boarding school chahiyeko cha do they need more engineering colleges in nepal nepal ma engineering college aaj hai dheri chahiyeko cha do we need better roads in nepal nepal ma aaj राम्रो सडक चाहिएको छ इफ वी ह्याव अल दैट दैट वुड बी ग्रेट त्यो सबै भएको भए अझ राम्रो हुने थियो आई शुड क्रिश्चियन स्पेंड टाइम डूइंग अल दिस थिंग त्यो क्रिश्चियनले सबै काम गरेर आफ्नो समय खेर फाल्नु पर्छ इफ यू क्यान डू दैट दैट्स फाइन अनि सबै जोले ठीक छ एकदम राम्रो बट व्हाट इज द पॉइंट इफ वी जस्ट एड्रेस द फेल्ट नीड तर हामीले उनीहरुको देख्न सकिने भौतिक खाँचो मात्र कुरा गर्छौ भने के फाइदा छ लुक एट बिन मार्क च्याप्टर 8 मोर्कुस आफ्टर दैट नी हुन्छ मार्क च्याप्टर 8 Verse 36. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? You know, man is the sarah sansa prapta gorita apne apna atma se ghumaye bhi kisne kya fayda hone sara? Now you tell me, what does it profit a man if he if he gains the whole world but loses his life? You know, man is the apna sarah apna lagi sarah sansa atma se tar apna jivan ghumaus atma ghumaus usse kya fayda? Every Nepali that I meet is trying to run away to the Middle East or to Canada or America. Or a Nepali ma, so Birsu, Dori Ramza, Malaysia, Dubai, Qatar, Canada, America. Every young person who gets a little bit of education wants to leave this country. Das kaise padegi khuto usan thal sa plane dira. So that they might have more money. Taaki un nazar dera paisa kam on sab. Even Christians, Christian or any pastor or anyone, because we haven't taught them the gospel. You know, I'm the only one who has heard the gospel. Because we had the churches have told them what is the gospel. Ani, I'm the. Iti, I'm the source of the Jesus who has heard the gospel. Come to Jesus, you will have everything. Ani, Jesus Christ, be not only giving you something. Jesus will give you health, and He will give you wealth, and He will give you prosperity. Ani, what is source of the gospel? Because Jesus will give you health, and He will give you wealth, and He will give you prosperity. Ani, what is source of the gospel? Because Jesus will give you health, and He will give you wealth, and He will give you prosperity. कारण मान्छेहरु के गर्छन् चर्चमा देख सुनाएका छन् त्यही खोज्दै भाग्छन् एन्ड दैट व्हाई वी कीप लिव लूजिंग पीपल टु दैट त्यस कारण हामी चर्चबाट भाइ बहिनीहरु नो बट व्हाट इज द रियल नीड तर हामीले थाहा छैन उनीहरु साँचो खासो के हो आई वी नीड टु गो टु द बाइबल टु अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज द रियल नीड अनि हामीले बाइबलमा हेर्नु पर्छ मान्छेहरु साँचो खासो के हो त व्हेन वी अंडरस्टैंड द रियल नीड देन ओनली वी विल ट्रुली अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज द गॉस्पेल हामी जब मान्छेको साँचो खासो बुझ्छौ तब हामीले सुसमाचारले राम्रोसँग बुझ्छौ देन ओनली वी विल अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट डज जीसस हैव टु डू विथ दिस गॉस्पेल अनि यसै कारण तब मात्र हामी बुझ्छौ सो कि यीशु ख्रीष्टले किन सुसमाचार पढ्छ एन्ड व्हाई डू वी रियली नीड टु टेक दिस थिंग सीरियसली अनि यो कुरालाई कति गम्भीर रूपमा हामी किन लिनु पर्छ भन्ने कुरा तब हामी बुझ्छौ अटर्न विथ मी टु रोमन्स च्याप्टर 1 रोमी एक अध्याय हामी हेर्ने छौ यू नो यू रिमेम्बर रोमन्स च्याप्टर 1 वर्स 16 इज अ वेरी वेरी कमन वर्स पीपल लाइक टु कोट दैट वर्स अ लॉट रोमी एक सोर सबैले थाहा छ मान्छेले त्यो कुरा कन्फर्म छ पदहरु सबैले त्यही कुरा भन्न चाहन्छन् अ पल सेज दैट आई एम नॉट अ शेम्ड ऑफ द गॉस्पेल पावल भन्छ म सुसमाचार सँग क्रिस्टको सुसमाचार सँग लज्जा लिन्छु व्हाई आई एम नॉट अ शेम्ड ऑफ द गॉस्पेल यू नो Uh, because it is the power of God for salvation. किन भने मुक्तिको निम्ति यो परमेश्वरको सामर्थ्य हो। Uh, salvation for everyone who believes. अनि विश्वास गर्ने हरेकको लागि। Uh, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. यहुदीको लागि र ग्रीकको लागि पनि। And in it the, the righteousness of God is revealed. किन भने यसैमा चाहिँ परमेश्वरको धार्मिकता प्रकट भएको छ। So God's power is shown how अनि परमेश्वरको सामर्थ्य कसरी देखाइएको छ? God's power is shown in and through the gospel. परमेश्वरको सामर्थ्य सुसमाचारमा र सुसमाचार द्वारा प्रकट गरिएको छ। And how is God's power shown in and through the gospel? कसरी यो भएको छ
Salvation comes to people. And why is that? Why does he talk about the power, the power of God? Why? Because it's a big thing. You know, felt needs can be addressed. If the government had, if there's less corruption, roads can be built properly. Uh, if the government has money, hospitals can come up, people will, can deal with sicknesses. If you have better economy, people will have job, poverty can be alleviated. You know, but salvation cannot be accomplished by anybody. Uh, you can't be saved on your own. It has to be the power of God. The real need has to be addressed by and His help. Well, what do we need to be saved from? Uh, verse 18. The real need. The big problem. For the wrath of God is revealed. God is angry. God is angry at whom? Uh, verse 18 tells us very clearly. Against all ungodliness. All and unrighteousness of men. Do you see that? Uh, who is in, included in this? Every Nepali, every Indian, every American, doesn't matter what caste you are, doesn't matter how much money you have, doesn't matter how big a house you have. And the wrath of God is being revealed against people on this earth. Uh, the problem, what is the problem? Why is God angry? Uh, because they are ignoring God. Because they are rejecting God. And they are doing it intentionally. It's not an accident. It's not a mistake. I'll then know it. I don't say this. This is God's word. Look with me in verse 19. For what can be known about God is plain to them. It's clear to them. How do we know it is plain to them? How do we know it is clear, clear to them? In verse 19. Because God has shown it to them. So what about those people who are up in the mountains in Jumla and Humla? What about them? What about the people who have no access, no roads? It takes three days to get there. Uh, they know about God. God has made it clear to them. And what is their biggest need then? Uh, they need to be saved. From what? From the wrath of God. Uh, why God is angry with them? Because they have turned away from the true God. And His invisible attributes, verse 20, is made clear. But they, what they have done is, even though God made it clear, what did they do? Verse 21. Uh, just yesterday I was talking to a young man who is at a seminary here in Nepal. And he was saying, I, I was talking to somebody and they were saying, what about people who have never heard the name of Jesus? Uh, will they go to heaven or will they go to hell? I said, have you read your Bible or not? How many years have you been in the seminary? What is Romans 1 tell us? Uh, they are without excuse, verse 20. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you've heard Jesus' name or not. You are under God's law. Why? Verse 21. Because they knew God. They did not honor Him. They did not give thanks to Him. And what happened? They became futile in their thinking. Verse 21, last line. Their foolish hearts were darkened. Do you see what is happening?
happen to a people? What is the biggest need of a people? Verse 22. They think they are wise. But they actually became fools. Verse 23. They exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Does this describe the people of Nepal and people of India? Then what do you think is the biggest thing? What is the gospel then? Verse 24 Then therefore Therefore Do you see that what they did? And God is angry so, so he gave them up. Uh, uh, and, and Paul uses that three times here. He gave them up. He gave them up. Uh, why did he give them up? Uh, he gave them first of all, he gave them up to do what they want to do basically. So he gave them up to their sexual desires. Uh, all kinds of unnatural sexual desires. And uh, why did he do that verse 25? Because they exchanged the truth about. God for a lie. And they worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator. Verse 26. For this reason. God gave them up. Oh my goodness, do you see that what God is doing? God is saying, You reject me. You turn away from me. You want to worship whom you want to worship. And you turn away from me. You want to worship whom you want to worship. Or you live as you want to live. Or you are free to do what you want to do. Uh, you are free to do what you want to do. Uh, your desires will be fulfilled. Uh, verse 28. And because they do not see fit to acknowledge God. Uh, which basically means they did not say God you are God you are great they did not say that they did not worship the one true God so and what is it they created God of their own minds of their own convenience people in India make different kinds of gods people in, in Nepal make different kinds of gods People in America make different kinds of gods. People in the developing world make different kinds of gods. People in the developed world have different kinds of gods. And so what does God do? Verse 28. Uh, he says he gives them up to a debased mind. You know, this passage preaches itself. I don't even have to tell you anything. This is amazing. It just tells what the situation of man is. And why did God give them up? Because they don't acknowledge God. And so God said, okay, fine, go do what you want to do. Go what you want to do. What you should not do. Do you see the difference? Do you see the difference? Go do whatever you want to do. But you should not do that. You shouldn't be doing that actually. Because this is a sign of rebellion. But you want to rebel? You want to live for yourself? Go and live for yourself. Go get caught up in your rebellion even more. And you think you are wise. And you think you are happy. And you think this is what you need. And therefore you will have it more. And God's wrath will be upon you even more. And verses 29 to 30 just gave us, gave us a long list of things that the world is engaged in. So what is happening to these people? All manners of unrighteousness, verse 29 begins with, they were filled with. So it's not just talking about idolatry, physical, material idolatry. It's just one aspect of that. By everything and anything that takes people away from worshipping the one and true only God. Now do you see what is man's biggest need? Do you see what is man's biggest need? 
He needs to be saved. He needs to be saved from God's wrath. He needs to be saved from all unrighteousness. And who needs to be saved from unrighteousness? Everybody needs to be saved from all unrighteousness. Uh, that is why in Romans chapter 3 verse 10 we have. And you know this verse. Romans chapter 3 verse 10 there is none as righteous, no not one, no one understands, no one seeks after God. All have turned aside together, they have become worthless, no one does good. Do you, do you see that? Do you see that? Are the people that you, when you go to the mountains are people who, who seem to be very gentle are people who seem to be very kind I was telling, I was talking to people here and I was saying people in Nepal are gentler than people in North India people are more friendly, people are nicer generally people are more friendly, people are nicer generally but even nicer people need God because they are not righteous in God's eyes. Because they do not understand truly. Because they do not truly seek God. They seek what they want. They just seek their own good good. They all have turned aside. Uh, that is why in Romans chapter 3 verse 23 tells us For all have sinned And all have fallen short of the glory of God uh, Do you see what is happening? So everyone in Nepal, Nepal every community, samudai, every tribe, zati, every language, dialect, tongue, bhasa, kul, what is sabi. their greatest need? What is their biggest problem? What is the biggest danger that they face? Oh, God is angry. His wrath rests upon them. Uh, they are living for themselves and they do not understand the truth they have fallen short of God's glory they do not see God even the very religious people even those people who go on pilgrimages they do not see the true God and because they do not see the true God the true God gives them to their desire <coughs> To do what ought not to be done. And therefore they are filled with all manner of unrighteousness and evil. And they are full of all these things. And verse 32 in chapter 1 is very, very sober. Very, it's just very sad. Verse 32. Verse 32. Though they know God's decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them but they give approval to those who practice them. And they practice so do you see what is happening here? What is man's biggest need? Uh, what is the gospel? When will the gospel truly be the gospel? When you and I substitute and, and try to say the gospel is just helping poor people. Uh, running an orphanage. Which is a good thing, not a bad thing. And Christians must do it if they can. Or helping the government, advocating, uh, advocating with the government to change laws to make it better, more just. And all those things are good. But they missed the point of the New Testament. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. What does it tell of John chapter 3? Are you know verse 16? But I'm not going there. I'm going to go verse 18. What does verse 18 tell us? You probably do not know this. That happens with many Christians. What does verse 18 tell us? 
It tells us whoever believes in him is not condemned. But look at the next section. But, but whoever does not believe is condemned already. Do you see that? And does your heart break when you read these passages? Is your heart full of fear when you read such verses? Is your heart full of compassion for the lost people? Do you see what God has done? Uh, for you and for me. Is your heart full of gratitude? But Lord, I was condemned. Uh, my biggest need was to be saved. Uh, thank you for doing that for me. You know, why are these people condemned? Verse 18. Because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. So what is the biggest need of people in the uh, Verse 36. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son does not see life. Uh, but the wrath of God remains on him. Uh, do you see these verses? Uh, do you, are you thinking, oh, this guy, why is he angry? Maybe Indians don't treat him well. That's why he's talking about the wrath of God. Uh, like gospel means good news. So let's, let's talk about happy things that make us happy. But good news does not, does not make sense unless you understand the bad news. You know, sometimes people say, I just go around and say, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. And then people look at them and say, uh, uh, Saved in which bank? You know, in India, people, when you say you save, you save in a bank account. Save from what? What does he save me from? Why does he save me? Do I need to be saved? Do people understand their real need? See, until you address, tell people what is their real need, they will not respond correctly. Oh, we need to tell people. We need to tell people, God's wrath remains on you, my brother and sister. Oh, it's not easy to preach this gospel. Uh, people will not appreciate you. The government, the government is not going to give you a special certificate for saying this to the people. Uh, they would put you in prison. Uh, what did the apostles say when, when, they were, when they were told not to preach? They say we must listen to God more than we should hear you. We will obey the higher authority. Uh, a lot of Christians in India say, You know, times are changing. 20 years ago you could preach the gospel. You could talk about sin and hell and wrath of God. But the times have changed, the government is different. Uh, therefore you need to be a little smart. So let's just talk about the love of God. Just let's talk about Jesus' friend. You know, there's already so many problems in the world. You know, people are already so depressed. You know, people are already so discouraged. So let's give them something positive. Let's tell them that God loves you. And you can keep telling them God loves you. And you can tell them for five years. And they would say, yeah, of course he loves me because I'm a good person. Why shouldn't he love me? 
किना प्रेम न करने वाले आई डिजर्व हिज लव आई डिजर्व हिज लव मलाई त गर्नै पर्छ वाले प्रेम इफ गॉड डजन्ट लव मी मान्छे छ इफ गॉड डजन्ट लव मी यदि पर्सनमा प्रेम गर्नु हुन्न देन ही इज नॉट अ गुड गर्ल अनि म चाहिँ असल पर्सन आई डोन्ट वांट दैट काइंड अफ गर्ल त्यस्तो पर्सन मलाई चाहिँ डू यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट बुझ्नु हुन्छ यो कुरा और दे विल गो एंड से गॉड हैज अ प्लान फॉर योर लाइफ सबै मान्छे हो परमेश्वर तपाईको परमेश्वरसँग तपाईको जीवन गर्न अचम्म योजना छ आ प्लान टु प्रोस्पर यू नॉट टु हार्म यू तपाईलाई उन्नति गर्ने सम्बन्ध बनाउने हानि पुर्याउने होइन तपाईलाई सम्बन्ध बनाउने योजना छ लेट्स टेल पीपल अबाउट this and importantly man 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 said yes one of course thousands of people will come after this kind of message yes to sandesh prachar garnu bhayo tapai ko lagi hazaro pachi lagcha but have they really understood that the jesus they are worshiping is a different jesus than what truly is they really buchhan ki saacho yesu le haina tinu harle arkai yesu le pachai racha you remember in mark chapter 8 we were reading mark chapter 8 mark chapter 8 we were reading mark chapter 8 you know when mark jesus comes he talks about himself who he is तो यीशु कुछ आउन भयो त उहाँले आफु म को हुँ भनेर उहाँले आफैले बताउनु भयो। He says the son of man must suffer many things and dejected and killed and after three days rise again। उहाँले भन्नु भयो मानिसको पुत्रले आउनु आवश्यक छ कष्ट भोग्नु मारिनु गाडी रोटे सुदेनु पुनर्जीवित हुनु आवश्यक छ। That is in Mark chapter 8 verse 31। आफु 31 मा हामी पाउँछौं। Ah so Peter doesn't like that। मान्छेले त्यो मन परेन। And in 32 he goes he takes Jesus right he's like Jesus what are you talking about you're out of your mind how can you die? अनि सवाले अनि बनिसक्यो किन यो कुरा गर्नुभयो कसरी तपाई मर्नुहुन्छ? Uh, then Jesus says, "Get behind me, Satan." Verse thirty-four. And verse thirty-four. 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 Ver
So when we talk about God, I want to, when we talk about uh, who God of the Bible is, we want to talk about four things. I mean, if we really want to, if we truly want to clearly enunciate, um, articulate the gospel. Number one, God, God is a, He is the Creator. This creation that we see didn't come up on its own. And uh, yesterday we were looking at Psalm 8, it is the work of his fingers. He placed the stars and the sun and moon in its place as he intended it to. So he is the owner, he owns everything. And this is very important for us to talk about again and again. And there is no one like him. The whole creation owes its existence to him. And God is created over what is man. And we are, we must submit to him. Because he has created us. We did not come on our own. See, in, 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 um, in our culture, we respect our parents a lot. And we think our parents are everything. And you talk to people and they will say, Yes, my parents brought me into this world. But the Bible does not allow that kind of worldview. That God is a creator. I, I owe my existence to God, not to my parents. I must respect them, I must honor them. I must do all my responsibilities that I need to do. But I must remember that God ultimately is my creator. And I, and I must submit to him first before I submit to anybody else. It's very difficult for many of us to understand this. Not only God of the Bible is the creator God. And a lot of people will not disagree with you. But God of the Bible is holy God. And what do we mean by holiness? He is perfect. 100% perfect. There is no mixture, no good, bad mixed in him. God has no incarnations that have sin in them. He doesn't use my illusion to do wrong things just to say it's part of his whole way of working. The God of the Bible is just he he's perfect hundred percent no dirt no 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 impurity in him. And you and I must emphasize this thing when we are talking about the gospel. And God of the Bible is holy but we are sinful and unholy. And this is a problem. Our God is holy, we are unholy. How do you come to a holy God? You know, our, our, our community, we talk a lot with, there's a lot of uh, casteism, right? And people don't want to touch this thing or touch that person. You don't eat this thing or you don't eat it that day or you don't go there then. So they have some idea of cleanness and uncleanness in their mind. If people in this world think so much about cleanness, ritual cleanliness and holiness, how much holy God is? 
रीतिगत शुद्धता को अशुद्धता शुद्धता को कुरा गर्छन् भने हाम्रो परमेश्वर जनबडी कति शुद्ध हुन्छ एन्ड दिस गॉड इज 100% होली यो परमेश्वर बाइबलको परमेश्वर 100% पवित्र हुन्छ हाउ मच डू यू ह्याव टु रिमूव फ्रॉम हियर टु बिकम अनहोली अनि उहाँलाई अपवित्र बनाउन कति कुरा वहाँबाट झिक्नु पर्छ हाउ मच अनहोलीनेस ह्याव यू टु मेक सो दैट इट बिकम्स अनहोली अनि यो 100% पवित्र कुरालाई त्यसलाई अपवित्र बनाउन त्यसमा अपवित्र कति मिसाउन पर्छ यु अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट आई एम ट्राइंग टु से उसले हुनुहुन्छ इन अर्डर टु स्टैंड बिफोर होली गॉड हु क्यान स्टैंड बिफोर अ होली गॉड अनि पवित्र परमेश्वरको सामु को हुन सक्छ ओनली होली पीपल क्योर पवित्र मान्छे हो एन्ड यु नो दिस इज व्हाई व्हेन आई टॉक टु अ लोट अफ पीपल व्हेन आई से गुड पीपल विल नॉट गो टु हेवन त्यसको लागि मान्छेहरु कुरा गर्दा भन्छ कि असल मान्छेहरु सोच्छ एन्ड दे कन्स्टन्टली शॉक लाइक व्हाट आर यु टॉकिंग अबाउट अनि तिनीहरु छक्क पर्छ के भने आई से परफेक्ट पीपल गो टु हेवन अनि सिद्ध पर सिद्ध मान्छेहरु मात्रै स्वर्ग जान्छ बिकज गॉड इज द बाइबल इज परफेक्ट इन द बाइबल को परमेश्वर And his dwelling is a perfect place. अनि वहाँ को बासस्थान निवासस्थान तो ये पवित्र सो। Only perfect people will enter. शिव का मानसर में तो त्याग पवित्र कर सन। And you know, if you're honest with yourself, you and I are not perfect. अनि तब आये रो, तब ईमानदार उन्होंने सब ने आप इस We are not hundred percent holy. तब आये ना मैं अपवित्र सो। Rather we are sinful and holy. अनि पवित्र जनों को रो, अनि पापी रो अपवित्र सो। Completely unholy. पूर्ण रूप में अपवित्र। And all of this, but God of the Bible is a just God. अतः दिमाग आये रो, Bible का पवित्र सो। पापी <laughs> वाले बनों से ये दोषी छोड़े जांच न्याय बुरी हो That person must face God's wrath अन्य त्यो मान से ले पौमेश्वर को क्रोध भोग लेगा And what is condemnation अन्य त्यो दंडा क्या क्यों Eternal death अनंत मृत्यु The second death दूसरो मृत्यु The physical death is just a, a just just the tip of it just a, it just to show what is coming अन्य सारिक मृत्यु से ये उटा आउना उन्हें पूरा भी उटा छाया नो मना मात्रे हो। I say in Hindi ये तो खाली trailer है अभी तो picture बाकी है। Hindi में मनीष कुछ नहीं बोला है ना? कुछ नहीं बोला? So this is just the trailer. The real thing is about to come. मन पर्स thing hindu sang kura garnu bhane srishti garda hununcha bhanne kura man parcha because a lot of incarnations you know what all the things they do lekin arko bibhinna roop haru hernu bhane apavitrata ka kura arda bhai paunu i say to them how can god be holy if the incarnations engage in all these things lekin arko roop haru ma chai ari sabai kharab kura ma unhe lageka chan bhane kasari timi arko so what they got to the bible to do is a loving god यसो भने बाइबलको परमेश्वर प्रेममय हुनुहुन्छ उहाँले के गर्नु भयो त हि सेन्ड द सन इन टु दिस वर्ल्ड अनि उहाँले यो संसारमा आफ्नो पुत्रलाई पठाउनु भयो व्हाट डिड हि डू उहाँले के गर्नु भयो हि लिव्ड अ परफेक्ट लाइफ उहाँले शुद्ध जीवन जिउनु भयो एन्ड फर टु थिंग्स जीसस डिड यसको चाहिँ दुईटा कुराहरु गर्नु भयो अ परफेक्ट लाइफ शुद्ध जीवन उहाँले जिउनु भयो दिस इज भेरी इम्पोर्टेन्ट फर अस टु अंडरस्टैंड यो कुरा बुझ्न एकदमै जरुरी छ समटाइम्स पीपल स्टे अवे गो टु द क्रॉस धेरै मानिसहरु एकैचोटि क्रुसको प्रचार गर्न पुग्छ वी मस्ट टॉक अबाउट द क्रॉस ओ हामीले क्रुसको बारेमा कुरा गर्नु पर्छ अल्सो रिमेम्बर जीसस डिड something in his life अन्त उहाँले यसु ख्रिस्ट आफ्नो जीवनमा पनि केही गर्नु भएको कुरा बुझ्नु पर्छ ही फुलफिल्ड ऑल द राइचियस डिमांड्स अफ द लॉ उहाँले व्यवस्थाका सबै धार्मिकताका मागहरु पूरा गर्नु भयो रिमेम्बर ओनली परफेक्ट पीपल विल गो टु हेवन सिद्ध मान्छेहरु मात्र स्वर्ग जान्छ मैले भने देयर इज नो परफेक्ट पर्सन इन दिस वर्ल्ड संसारमा कोही पनि छैन सिद्ध द ओनली परफेक्ट म्यान वाज जीसस क्राइस्ट एकमात्र सिद्ध मानिस यसु ख्रिस्ट हुनुहुन्थ्यो एन्ड नॉट ओनली डिड लिव अ परफेक्ट लाइफ एन्ड ही डाइड अ जीवन मात्र वन सिद्ध जीवन मात्र जिउनु भएन तर उहाँ क्रुसमा मर्नु पनि भयो एन्ड हिज डेथ वाज परफेक्ट इट वाज कंप्लीट अनि उहाँको मृत्यु 
पूर्ण थियो ए ही ही कम ही पेड द पेनल्टी ऑफ आवर सिन्स वहाले हाम्रो पापको सजाय भोग्नु भयो एन्ड व्हाई डिड जीसस हैव टु डाई किन यीशु क्रिस्ट मर्नु परे रिमेम्बर द वेजेस अफ सिन इज डेथ पापको जया लाग्यो And so Jesus died. Let's go to Chris Mornway. Why did Jesus die? Why am I Mornway? He died in your place. Why am I Road Town? Why am I Road Town? In my place. मेरो सट्टा म म म मर्नु पनि दाउ म मर्नु इन इंग्लिश इन इंग्लिश कॉल्ड डबल इम्पुटेशन अनि हामी अंग्रेजीमा भन्छ डबल इम्पुटेशन दोहोरो आधार प्रदान हत्या रोपण अथवा आधार पहिरन आधार आधार बोल्दा एक्सचेंज एक्सचेंज ग्रेट एक्सचेंज द ग्रेट एक्सचेंज मोर सिम्पल वन द ग्रेट एक्सचेंज अझ सरल भाषामा भन्नु भने एउटा एउटा महान आदान प्रदान भयो क्रुसमा परमेश्वर र मानिसको बीचमा सो व्हाट ह्याप्पन एट द क्रस के भयो क्रुसमा बाय फेथ विश्वास द्वारा आ माय सिन्स वर पुट ऑन जीसस क्राइस्ट मेरा पाप और यीशु क्रिस्ट माथि राखियो एंड टू पे फॉर माय सिन्स जीसस डाइड ऑन द क्रॉस अनि मेरो पापको सजाय भोग्नको निम्ति यीशु क्रिस्ट मर्नुभयो पे फॉर माय सिन्स कम्प्लिटली एंड फुली अनि उहाँले मेरो पापको सजाय पूर्ण रूपमा उहाँले तिर्नुभयो फॉर ऑल द सिन्स दैट आई हैव कमिटेड मैले गरेको सबै पापहरूको निम्ति द सिन्स ऑफ माय इन द पास्ट मैले विगतमा गरेको पाप सिन्स इन द प्रेजेंट वर्तमानमा गर्ने पाप सिन्स इन द फ्यूचर भविष्यमा पनि गर्न सक्ने पापहरू सिन्स ऑफ द थॉट words and deeds हाम्रो सोचाइ बोली र काममा हामीले गरेका पापहरु Jesus paid it all यीशु क्रिस्टले पुरै तिर्नु भयो We say that said right Jesus paid it all गीत गाए भने भजन गाए यीशुले पुरै तिर्नु भयो He did how did he do that कसरी गर्नु भयो त्यो काम He did it by dying in my place मेरो सत्तामा मरेर उहाँले यो काम गरे So remember John tells us God's wrath is upon them Yes sir Yohanna 3 को सच्चमा हेर्नु भयो परमेश्वरको क्रोध पापी माथि रहिरहन्छ But Jesus takes away God's wrath अनि परम यीशु क्रिस्टले परमेश्वरको क्रोध हटाइ दिनुहुन्छ He satisfies God's wrath परमेश्वरको क्रोधले शान्त शान्त में पार्नु हुन्छ त्यो नट ओन्ली ही सटिस्फाइज गॉड त्यो मात्र होइन बट बाइ बिलीविंग इन हिम यो तर उहाँमाथि विश्वास गर्न उहाँमाथि भरोसा गर्न हिज परफेक्ट लाइफ उहाँको सिद्ध जीवन हिज राइटियसनेस उहाँको धार्मिकता इज क्रेडिटेड टु अस अनि हामीलाई पाइरहन्छ इज इम्प्युट इज गिवन टु अस हामीलाई दिइन्छ इट्स इट्स सीन एज इफ इट इज आवर्स अनि यो यस्तो चाहिँ यो हाम्रो हो कि चाहिँ इट्स नॉट इट्स नॉट माय राइटियसनेस मेरो धार्मिकता होइन बट इट इज हिज राइटियसनेस उहाँको धार्मिकता मलाई पाइरहन्छ So when I respond in faith, तो वो मैं ले विश्वास कर सु, and when I repent of my sins, तो वो मैं ले मेरे पाप को पसंद करूँ, when I trust in Jesus, तो वो मैं ले पर इसु क्रिस्ट माती विश्वास कर सु, भरोसा कर सु, hundred percent holy, former से ले माले सत पर्ति सत पवित्र रूप में एक दिन मुझे declared righteous, अनि माले धार्मिक घोषणा करूँ, and his righteousness is credited into my account, अनि वहाँ को धार्मिकता वो मेरे खाता में आली, it's not my righteousness, मेरा � तब बाहर हो ऐसे कुछ ले कम होने वाले धार्मिक बट बाय फेथ आई रिसीव इट विश्वास दर में इसलिए ग्रोन बाय ट्रस्टिंग इन जीसस क्राइस्ट हमारे भरोसा करें रा एंड माय बिगेस्ट नीड मेरे सब ये बंदा छुलो खांच हो माय ग्रेटेस्ट नीड मेरे सब बंदा छुलो महान माय मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट नीड सब बंदा महत्वपूर्ण खांच टू बी फॉरगिवन नत्र परमेश्वर को क्रोध मैं अभी क्रोध अनंत काल से मेरे सट्टा में परमेश्वर को क्रोध भोग्न भाई भरोसा कर गुड न्यूज इज जीजस सेव मी फ्रम गड्स रॉज सो दैट आई कैन बी विथ हिम फर इटर्निटी सुसमाचार यही हो कि यशु क्रिस्ट ने मेरे सट्टा में परमेश्वर को क्रोध भोग्न भाई ताकि अनंत काल से मैं वहाँ से वो रहने सकूँ। The good news is that Jesus paid for my sins for the penalty of my sins। असल खबर ये हो कि मेरे पाप को रीन यीशु क्रिस्ट ने तीर दिया। The good news is that I am declared righteous because of what Jesus did। असल खबर ये हो कि यीशु क्रिस्ट ने जे काम क्रूश में पूरा करने को त्यों काम ले अब हम लाये धार्मिक घोषणा करेगा। So if I live in this world and I have no money अनि जब म संसारसम्म संसार बस्छु जब सम्म सम्म पैसा हुँदैन एन्ड आई डाई इन जीसस क्राइस्ट जब म यीशुमा विश्वास गरेर म मर्छु आई एम द रिचेस्ट म्यान इन ऑन अर्थ मिस खल्दीमा एक क्वेशन नभए पनि स्पिरिट इफ आई एम वन अफ द धनी मान्छे म हुने छु इफ आई एम वन अफ द लोएस्ट अफ द लोएस्ट कास्ट इन द कम्युनिटी समुदायमा म सबभन्दा तल्लो जातको भए तापनि बट आई ट्रस्ट इन जीसस सर जब म यीशु क्राइस्टमा विश्वास गर्छु माय सिन्स आर फर्गिवन मेरो पापहरु क्षमा गरिन्छ एन्ड आई एम विथ हिम फर इटर्निटी म सधैं भरिको लागि उहाँसँग हुन्छु आउ दैट इज द बेस्ट थिंग दैट क्यान हैपन टु मी त्यो चाहिँ मैले पाउन सक्ने सबभन्दा असल कुरा हो सबभन्दा ठूलो जातको बट डू यू बिलीव दिस के यो तपाई विश्वास गर्नुहुन्छ डू यू ट्रुली बिलीव दिस साच्चै रुपमा विश्वास गर्नुहुन्छ आर यू सेइंग यस यस जीसस बाद तपाईले भन्छ हो हो यशु तर 
Jesus is not going to feed me roti, is he? Or oh, who is going to get me dal bhat? For that I need something else. Or for that you need to work hard. I'll go get a job. I'll go work hard as much as you can. And by God's grace, things will change most of the time. And, and even if it doesn't change. What does it profit a man? If he gains the whole world, if he has all the food, if he has all the education, if he has all the respect, if he has all the health, and but he goes to hell, what does it gain? There's no gain in that. What is the gospel? <coughs> that I am trusting in Jesus. And because of what Jesus has done, not because I am perfect, because He is perfect, because His work when He came into this earth, because His perfect life for 33 years, and because of His death on the cross, and because of His resurrection, I have life and life abundant and life that will never end this is not fairy tale this is not mythology this is not trying to fool people this is truth this is reality 1 Corinthians chapter 15 tells us if there is no resurrection if there is no life after life, if the better life is not yet to come, then you and I are fools. We are wasting our time. Let's go out and eat, drink and be merry. Let's do as much as whatever we can because tomorrow we will die. And tomorrow we will perish. And there's nothing after this life. But for Christians the hope is and the hope we want to give to the world that the better life is yet to come. But only you can get it when you trust in Jesus. When you repent of your sins. Do you preach this gospel? Do you believe in this gospel? Let's pray.